Hi there, this video is sponsored by SASE, a growing community of peers that are at the intersection of automation and software engineering. More on that later. Though I've been working in industrial automation for a while, imposter syndrome is constantly around the corner, reminding me that I don't know enough. On this channel, I normally share my knowledge of the stuff I do know and have worked with, but industrial automation is a big field. There are a lot of things I have not had the opportunity to learn and work with. In this video, I'll go through 25 things in the field of industrial automation I have limited or no knowledge and experience about. BNR Automation Studio 5000. I've seen the nice BNR PLCs out there in the field and the development environment seems really good too. They are one of the few vendors that store source code in plain text. I would love to work with a BNR system one day. Mechanical Engineering. Though I love the art of writing software for PLCs, I've always been amazed by the people doing the stuff that you can actually touch, the mechanical engineers. Working and making cool things in software like SOLIDWORKS just seems so... it just looks very very cool. While software is just something abstract and where you in best case develop something that will never be talked about, as everyone just expects it to work, the mechanical engineers work with the things that everyone can touch and feel. Opto 22 PLCs. I gotta admit, the Opto 22 Groove Epic PLCs have always been an eye-catcher. The big smart phone size display integrated into the PLC looks really neat. I've got no idea whether their development environment is any good, but the pretty PLCs is a good reason enough for me to want to try it out. Phoenix Contact PLC Next. I can't go to any industrial fair without missing the PLC Next booth. This ecosystem of PLCs, accessories and software looks very capable. They're not only relying on the classical PLC programming languages, but you can also program them using a traditional high-level programming language such as C and C++. Beckhoff XTS. Beckhoff is the brand I have most experience with, but if it's one Beckhoff product I haven't worked with at all, it's the XTS. I love watching these systems on industrial fairs with their magnetically driven movers. I mean, it's magnets. Who doesn't love magnets? Sue Eurodrive. I love working with motion control and have been fortunate with the opportunity to integrate drives from multiple manufacturers into various solutions. One manufacturer of drives that I've never got the opportunity to work with, although I've seen them in the field multiple times, is Sue Eurodrive. They look and feel very high quality, so this brand is definitely something I want to work with. Control X Automation. I've tested this one out, but never applied it to a real project. Bosch seemed to have developed a very interesting product. I especially like how relatively open their ecosystem is and their runtime is running on a real-time capable Linux. This is a platform I'll be coming back to here on my YouTube channel. Visual Components Though I've used virtual commissioning software for higher level testing before, I've not had the opportunity to work with visual components yet. The reason they are on this list is because their product seems very capable and also looks really good. Their front-end team have made a really good work. They also seem to be easy to integrate with back-off systems, so that's a good fit for me. Universal Robots I love the looks of these blue shiny beautiful robots. They have the Scandinavian design over them and just look much better than any other robots I've seen. However, I've never had the opportunity to work on a project that uses them, even though they are so common in our industry. Would love to get the ins and outs of the robots and the integrations of them. Industry 4.0 To be honest, this is such a general buzzword that everyone and no one can be experts on it. I've done work related to this buzzword, but looking at the industry, there are, it just seems there is an infinite more stuff I could learn related to it. Alan Bradley Rockwell on the other side of the pool, more specifically in the States, Allen Bradley PLCs is the most popular brand to use within industrial automation. Whatever I think of the brand itself and their capabilities to do stuff, you would expect from a software perspective, they still have a huge market share and I think it's just one of these brands that is good to be able to work with. Electrical cabinet building. Now, though I've never directly been building cabinets myself, I still get in contact with them on a daily basis with the various projects that I'm delivering. Though this is generally subcontracted or have the client themselves take care of this, I'm always amazed on the skills of the people working on cabinet design and building. A really well-designed cabinet can look great and it's nice to see the hardware of which all the software is running on. A few words from today's sponsor. Automation engineering can be pretty hardcore. 
On a typical day on site, you might have to deal with a mechanical problem, an electrical problem, or a software problem, or some nasty combination of all two or three of those things at the same time. That is a lot to deal with when you're sitting on an upside down trash can lid as your desk. So it would make complete sense that you would feel maybe like an imposter from time to time. We've all been there. And the way we solve that is by learning from each other. I created a group called SASI, the Society of Automation Software Engineers, as a way to bring people together to share this knowledge. Because let's be real, it's a lot to know and no one person knows all of it. So come check it out. It's at sassy.space. Semantic AX. Though very few people have used AX, as it's simply not yet released, Siemens' new development environment seems promising. Some of the few things that are great about it is source code as plain text, easy version control management, common LAN interface, access to the compiler, development environment based on VS Code, and much, much more. I have a whole separate video dedicated to it. See the link below. This I'm going to keep a close eye on for the future. Omron PLCs. Though I've used a lot of Omron equipment over the years, I've never had the opportunity to work with their PLCs. People that I've spoken to using Omron swear by the Japanese PLCs, so I hope to get an opportunity to work with them. Siemens WinCC HMI. Though I've worked with Siemens systems a few times, I've never done any front-end work with their WinCC SCADA system. I've seen some really pretty and solid front-ends in the industry that have been made with the WinCC and considering how common Siemens is out there, I think this would be a valuable skill to have. Electrical drawings in ePlan. Related to the topic of building electrical cabinets, I'm not an electrical engineer, but I still review and check electrical drawings. Every time I see them, I always think it would be cool to know the software that produces the drawings. ePlan is just one of those software that you can't get away from when you work with industrial automation. All of the thousands of IOLINK devices. IOLINK is a point-to-point -point communication protocol for sensors and actuators. Other than giving the process data, it provides additional information such as diagnostics. Though I've used a couple of dozen or so IOLINK devices already, there is an additional infinite amount of them out available. About a decade ago, I fell in love with IOLINK and I just love to take every opportunity to integrate more of these devices. Profisafe. I've mostly used safety hardware like safety relays or safety over etiquette for safety, but never used the Siemens Ditto. I don't expect it to be that much different compared to the etiquette variant in terms of capabilities and functionality, but would still be good to use a few of these devices. Yaskava robots. These Japanese robots with their pretty blue color have always amazed me and industries using them seem to be really happy. They ooze high quality and there is no way to be in the industry for a while and not come across Yaskawa robots at some factory. Bucknet. I've never done a single building automation project in my life. But whenever building automation is mentioned, the Bucknet standard is mentioned. Bucknet is a global communication standard for building automation and control networks. I think it would be cool to learn the ins and outs of this. Inductive Automation Ignition If you've worked in industrial automation for a few years, there is no chance that you can miss the Inductive Automation Ignition platform. Seems like an amazing hub for plant for system integration. Even though I've seen multiple systems developed by this, I've never had the chance to try it out myself. Can't wait until I get to work with this. Function Block Diagrams I've never been a big fan of graphical programming languages, and function block diagrams is probably on the bottom of the ISC languages I would like to learn. Still, I from time to time see code written in FBD, so it would be good to get some experience with it. Mitsubishi PLCs Next to Omron, this is another Japanese PLC brand that I see from time to time. I've worked in some projects and had the opportunity to talk to some talented automation engineers that swear by the reliability of the Mitsubishi brand. Instruction List Instruction List is an assembler-like programming language and the second text-based programming language in the ISC 611.31-3 standard, together with structure text. Even though Instruction List will disappear from the next revision of the ISC standard, it doesn't mean that it will disappear from the industry as there are plenty of legacy systems written in that, that have to be maintained. And finally on place 25. I don't know what I don't know. There is a lot of stuff I have not even discovered in this field. An infinite amount of concepts and products that people are working with in this field. This list should probably be called the 100,000 things I don't know about in industrial automation. What's a topic within industrial automation that you don't know so much about but that you would like to learn? 
please let me know by writing a comment below. Until next time, happy coding! This is already, there is an... <laughs> Come on, stop parking, stop parking. <laughs> BNR Automation Studio 5000. <laughs>